car at the same time. Nah, it doesn't work out like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on into just talking. And our guest that's zooming in on with us is Dan Mitri. He is such a kick-ass dude. He plays the guitar. He does vocals. He's in a band called Stations while still in the video game industry with New Wave Esports. So how's it going, Dan? Good. Really good, man. It's good to, good to be back. Thank you for having me. Good to see you, Marissa, up there in space. How, how I have here? To trans- uh, yeah, I mean, you're looking good. You know um, <laughs> real quickly, though. Wait, Dan, real quickly as I transition down to Earth. Um, <laughs> Don't come down here. Don't come down here. It's not looking good. <laughs> you gotta go do it. It's not looking good. <laughs> we don't have all the information yet. Go back up. <laughs> I'm in Frisco. They're getting the quarantine under control. Yeah. Anyway, Dan, as you can tell, I'm out of the job since Chris has taken over my sidekick duties. And um, if he gets any better, I might not be here. So are you hiring? Yeah, you want to play yeah. some video games competitively? Come on over. I yeah, love it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I would love that. That's great. I mean, your, it now, do, I get, do I get money run. by losing? Do I get money by losing? Because I'm not a like, really good video player. <laughs> you can make that into your contract. You might not get money, but I can pay in Cheerios. <laughs> I pay in Cheerios. Oh, okay. I'm in. But, Bye, Chris. We, might, <laughs> so we might as well jump on into it because not too many people actually know what esports is. And is it all just fully competition or is it beyond that, Dan? Well, you know, there's a, deline- a delineation between esports and competitive gaming. Uh, competitive gaming is playing games in a competitive fashion. CSGO is a competitive game. You know, Overwatch is a competitive game. But eSports is taking that to a different arena where you have all these different sort of uh, professional teams, professional players, athletes, and the whole ecosystem that comes around that, whether it's uh, online events to uh, filling out arenas to sponsorship flows, that's eSports. So it is literally the traditional sports model taken into a 2020 uh, version of video game sport playing. So... And how to make sure that you, you draw that line. Yeah, and so how do um, video game players, right, how do they benefit from something like eSports compared to competitive gaming? Uh, so everybody can play competitively, you know. It's just, are, are you, do you have the skills or do you have the backing to get into a professional arena? Uh, mm-hmm. And eSports, actually, it's not just for the top-notch pros. There's a lot of amateur leagues as well. Uh, you see a lot of uh, initiatives here in Downey uh, and in Compton with uh, some of their school districts actually creating programs for high schoolers to get involved with that paves way to uh, some college funding all the way up to how do I get into more pro-am leagues and then how do I make that jump to the professional leagues. So when you start getting to the professionals, that's where the money comes. You know, and that's where your, your salaries come as an athlete or uh, you're getting serious sponsor dollars. Uh, so as someone in the esports industry, we're looking at every single piece of the pie and how do we actually create a great user journey to help some of these young budding athletes come up out of high school and into the pro ranks. So uh, it's been exciting to see uh, this grow uh, phenomenally over the past couple of years. See, that's pretty awesome. My little brother um, wanted to be be a professional uh, video gamer, but back then there was no path. It was like, (laughs) it was, I mean, no one knew how you became a video gamer. I mean, his video gaming was so bad that my dad had to turn off the internet for our entire household. (laughs) My brother would not eat, like literally just did not eat. He played straight, didn't sleep, eat. It was crazy. maybe he'd be like a millionaire yeah and i i mean i think that's something that a lot of the, the viewers right now that are on youtube and they're listening in how could they be a part of esports because i didn't know that it was all the way down at the high school level i know our ccs contributor kevin drake he has his show out at uci and they have their own esports league in college level and i thought that was so insane but for someone who let's say they're not going down the school curriculum right how could they become an esports, you know, video gamer um, by pursuing it on their own? How how do you make those steps happen? Yeah, that, that's what's uh, interesting about esports is it's it's not as limited as say traditional sports, right? In order to become a pro, say baseball player, uh, you really got to start at a young age. You know, you're going through a lot of coaching. A lot, of, you know, sometimes you can uh, you know get into high school and some of your college sports and then make it make a name for yourself there and you get drafted onto the minor leagues and you go on to the major leagues. But it's a whole sort of 
system, right? What's beautiful about esports is you can come in at any stage. And as long as you're good, number one, you can compete out there. Now, does that mean that you're going to get picked up by a team? Does that mean you're going to be playing on the big franchise leagues like the Call of Duty Franchise League? Uh, I think it just got announced here in 2020. Not necessarily. There's, there's requirements and there's limitations. So, like, and a lot of these big franchise leagues run by Activision uh, or, um, you know, or, or uh, you know, whatever big publisher there is out there, they have requirements that you have to meet and you have to actually have a spot in the franchise. And there's a buy-in for that. And usually that buy-in is backed by a big company. And so now you're associated with this big company and you've made your, a name for yourself as a professional athlete. Uh, but what's beautiful about esports, I'm going to circle back here, is that there are open leagues. So let's take, for example, the Fortnite uh, World Cup. That's an, that's an open uh, tournament. And so the, the kid that won last year in 2019 did yeah. not have the backing of, her, of a professional team. He was just damn good. And so oh, that wow. tells the world that you could be a 16-year-old wonder and rise up from the ranks. As long as you're good and you have uh, a proficiency in the game and you have, you know, the, the drive to, to be one of the best, you can do that. And you can go and crush it and take home X amount of millions of dollars <laughs> right. and jump on Jay Leno the next day. Like that kid was <laughs> an instant rock star overnight. Uh, so it's so the the borders are not nearly as uh, controlled in esports as it is as it is in traditional sports. That's why that because... is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, oh I mean, I, I didn't know he had no backing. I thought his kid was like trained yoga. You know the whole <laughs> trained in yoga. Wow. Is that what you said? <laughs> They do yoga now. All the esports, they do yoga and meditation. I mean, think I got my yoga ball. (laughs) (laughs) But you were just saying, like, for example, with last year's winner of the Fortnite Open Cup, right? Uh, What is this average age of these guys that are becoming esports? Because a lot of them, they seem like they're 16 to 18 years old. What what is the average age group uh, that are esports players? Yeah, I would say uh, 16 to young 20s. Um, you know, the, the, the sharp uh, motors, motor movements, the dexterities there, uh, yeah. and much like traditional sports, the older you get, the slower we get, you know? And so, like, there's no way that I can compete in the same arena as some of these 16-year-old kids in Counter-Strike go. They just <laughs> yeah. they absolutely slaughter me because they're just they're unless, <laughs> Unless, Dan, you – Allow yourself to get AI augmented, and then your fingers will be totally fast. Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say, you know, we just, we just entered a new decade. Do you see that age demographic changing for, uh, com- you know, esports competitors? I mean, do you think that might change realistically, let's say, 25-year-old range? Uh, I, I think so. Like, um, there's still some older athletes out there, you know, uh, hell, I mean, there is no age limit with gaming, right? There's like a 65 year old man that actually holds uh, a Twitch channel and does really well just playing competitively and playing different games. Now, does that mean he's good in an esports arena? Not necessarily. And I can guarantee that our motor skills and our, and our sharpness does degrade over time. So there's no way that, uh, necessarily a 65 year old man is going to be as good as someone on, on a counter-strike oh there's anomalies i get it um but i would say you're going to see 16 to 25 year old athletes sort of be the uh, the cream of the crop for for quite some time yeah let me throw this at you because uh, i know with my dad and i we're always joking about like man if there was a sport i wish i invested in at an early age uh, we always used to think it's golf because the longevity of playing that sport you can play until you're 65 Do you think maybe video games might outtake golf? I think so. Absolutely. You're seeing it now. Yeah. Look, the gaming industry has, again, proven its resiliency through all of this. You know, with with everything going down, you see more people logging into games. You see more logins on Steam. They're they're shattering records. You see Twitch hitting 3 billion hours watched in like a single day. That's insane. Uh, we saw a major uh, hit in our economy in 2008 with the recession. And even uh-huh. then, gaming did just as well. So that should... Okay. So I have, a, Go ahead. I have a question then, based off of your analysis that e-gaming is staying around. So there's um, articles kind of floating around that, no, you should not invest in e-gaming. 
So yeah. you're telling us we should invest. So what's going on really? Well, like, why are they saying don't invest when e-gaming to me seems like it is pretty popular? Well, one of the biggest vocal people about that was actually Mark Cuban and the rest of the Shark Tank people. They've actually been shutting down your industry, Dan, saying that there is no future in investing on esports. What do you say to people like Mark Cuban? Yeah, um, I, I think it's a, a skewed opinion. Uh, so look, I've been in gaming for 18 years now. Uh, and le again, let's draw another line. There's, there's the traditional gaming industry, and then there's esports. And a lot, and they do, kind of, they, although they do cross uh, sect, you know, uh, they are two different sort of industries because of the different players involved here. Um, when I, when I, when I hear that, obviously we have all this great performance numbers coming out of uh, the video game industry showing that we're playing more games because we're home. That's good. Yeah. And that gives a lot of fuel for developers out there to say, Hey, I need more funding because look, we're, we're killing it over here. We're monetizing in our games and it's doing well. Uh, but then there's esports Now, we got impacted really hard with uh, our, our, the current situation. Uh, we had to shut down all of our offline events. We cannot hold mm. arenas like we used to, you know? So these are all being postponed to Q3. Q4, now looking at next year, you know, here in LA, Mayor Garcetti said, said no venues until yeah. 2021. Yeah. And so, yeah, that means we will not see, you know, the LA-based uh, teams actually perform in a real-life setting. Now, those who have been proficient in the digital realm are going digital and they're making up for those revenue losses by going into digital programming. So when Mark Cuban says, Hey, watch out. I would say that is a wise uh, advice because mm. we have seen a decline in hype in esports. We saw that there's no profitability like we had promised last year with COVID impacting us that hits us even harder, but esports is a part of gaming. And publishers and developers very much need esports to create more retention loops and live service in their game. So it's not going around yeah, anytime right. soon. So if yeah. anything, look at your key players and, and try to find the companies and the teams that you feel are going to weather through this and invest in them now because you're getting it at the bottom level. And then as that grows in 2021, boom, you see the multipliers. Yeah, well, I'll be like sure to invest as soon as my stimulus check comes in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't that the truth? I mean, on the real though, it's like Mark Cuban. Where is my check? <laughs> well, like Mark Cuban's not a video gamer. He doesn't know that the PlayStation and Xbox are about to be dropping new consoles. This seems like the time to do it while everything's kind of kicking back, at least from a personal opinion on my end. But I know things can get so crazy during this whole COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the things I definitely wanted to uh, uh, tease you about, well, actually, it's not teasing. I actually think it's really groovy. You're finding new ways to uh, find different hobbies during these times. And you're like living through a virtual realm of Skyrim right now. <laughs> you know, you got into this world of blacksmith. So how did this all get started? Because not everybody, when they're staying at home, is like, hey, I want to start a blacksmith and burn my house down in accident while we're all secluded you know, and isolated. So how did this whole venture get started? I, uh, I got bit by the blacksmith bug before this all went down. Uh, <laughs> and it just so happened that it was the perfect hobby because then I could, you know, people that are not bothering me. I just tinker away in my garage all day. Uh, dude, it's raw, it's visceral, you know, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. I mean, you're melting metal up to 2,500 degrees and you're pounding this with a hammer. Like, it's a lot of fun to let that aggression out. Um, and yeah, it's a little old world. So it's like, what is this guy like <laughs> blacksmithing over here making broadswords and shit? Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, you're uh, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would have been in trouble we're at 22 West, okay? Okay. <laughs> so are you... Is like one of your aspirations then to go on um, that TV show, The Blacksmith Show? Because I love that show. I would totally root for you. Those guys are rad at what they do. Um, <laughs> I'm not even looking to open an Etsy shop with my stuff. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all Christmas just for, gifts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Christmas gifts. It's uh, pandemic <laughs> gifts. It's, you know, everybody needs a knife during the end of the yeah, world. I was going to so. say, what is oh, a yeah. pandemic gift? Are you making I, I want. I want to. Pandemic gift. I'm gonna shoot you my address. I expect one. Done. See, maybe <laughs> we maybe we were thinking the whole time that Dan's living in Skyrim, but maybe he's thinking it's Last of Us Part Two. We don't want you to get a little too too crazy just yet, Dan. Okay, <laughs> tone it back. All right. 
But you know what? The one thing I love about you is not too many people are honest when they say video games have reshaped their lives. I know at least for myself, I love video games. Video games has obviously brought me and my friends close together years on out, especially during these times. You know, I'm like, there's no sports. What do I do? I jump on with all my buddies. We go on GTA 5 and we start betting on horse races. I mean, we, we do everything together to try to bond as much as we can. And video games has definitely shaped that culture for us. But you had a different perspective on it. And I think it's really cool. So could you share that with our, you know, our viewing audience? Yeah, like many gamers out there, we started at a young age. You know, I started playing games of four uh, on an Atari, uh, graduated on the NES. My favorite game, retro game of all time is Mario 3. Still play that mm. on every version. I think I own like 20 different versions of this. Wow. Over the past couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> I play every single one of them. It's like, oh, I've never played this before. Ah, no, no, all the secrets. <laughs> uh, but no, I built a, a career around gaming. It is it, it is my life force. Like it's it's every part of my my daily life, and I'm so grateful for it. It's challenging, I'll tell you that. It keeps you on your toes. There's a lot of really smart people out there, um, but it's such a close knit community, and that's yeah. why we have platforms like Twitch that thrive. It's because even in these times, and we're more reliant on on digital mediums, you know, like Zoom and and uh, you know things, the services that the internet provide you can't take away our need for social interaction and gaming allows us to do that. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of A-list celebrities are starting to recognize that. And one of the biggest things I know Marissa and I have noticed, you know, as we've discussed on the show with uh, certain actors or comedians and whoever, you know, came on the show in the past, you know, we've noticed that, you know, Norman Reedus, he, he led the forefront last year. And now the big game that's dropping this year with Keanu Reeves, which I'm beyond stoked, cyberpunk 2077 and are you guys are we gonna see it like a whole new trend in this next decade where we're gonna see a lot more a-list celebrities trying to jump in because it seems like that's the go-to right now right yeah i think you know there's there's two players here right you have the publisher developer um granted you need some pretty deep pockets in order to afford yeah. like a keanu reeves uh but i think you'll start seeing some more uh, b and c list actors start getting involved and the reason why is uh, that's a great marketing vocal piece so you got keanu reeves in our game number one he's a great aesthetic so he's he, he paid his his look pays homage to cyberpunk uh but also you get that megaphone of having keanu reeves involved and then, you know, you have the gaming industry that is much bigger than TV and film. Uh, just from revenue alone, we, we've been crushing it year over year. Yeah. And you have actors trying to diversify their portfolio by getting involved in some of these major IPs and these major productions. You know, a game costs on up like a AAA game costs anywhere from 100 to 150 million dollars plus. Wow. So this is kind of wow. the same budgets as movies. Um, and so because they're in, in entertainment, it would it would behoove them to get involved with the number one entertainment property in the world. And that's video games. So it's a benefit for both parties involved. Yeah, I think so too. And I think you made a great point. I mean, I was thinking the same thing. I I feel like video games are going to start to dictate. I mean, they're going to start to take more money than your traditional movie studio companies, you know, Netflix and video games. It feels like that's the new venture moving forward. And Dan, this has been so cool. And one last question before we start to transition into Strike Accord, but what are your thoughts? What is your favorite Battle Royale style game? Is it Fortnite? Is it Warzone? Is uh, is there something new that's out there that, you know, the viewer needs to know? What is that game, Dan? Dude, I have been playing Warzone nonstop. Yes. (laughs) So good. It's so so good. good. Uh, And I I used to work on Battlefield, so don't tell my Battlefield buddy, (laughs) but I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty lately. It's good. No, it's true, man. uh, Dan, where can our listeners follow you? Uh, Yeah, I'm on Twitter, uh, Dan underscore Mitri, Instagram, Dan Mitri. You can check out all this weird blacksmith stuff that I'm making, giving more context into my old world, old soul hobbies. (laughs) And if you listeners, if you like what you're listening to, please go to the com and become a member today and get a free CCS t-shirt. What's good? I'm Chris Collins. For more updates on the future of our generation, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out the com. Peace.